let's see if we can prove that claim to be right or wrong. Open your Bible with me. Number one, Luke 3, 23. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli. Matthew 1, 16. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Did you notice something strange here? Who was the father of Joseph exactly? Luke says it's Heli, but Matthew says it's Jacob. These are two pages in the Bible, and one of them at least is a lie. Which one is it? Number 2. Acts 1.18 with the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all of his intestines spilled out. What a shameful death. Matthew 27, 5. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Did you notice something strange here? How did Judas die exactly? Acts says he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. But Matthew says he hanged himself. One of them at least is a lie. Or maybe both. Who knows? Number 3. 2 Kings 24.8 Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 3 months. 2 Chronicles 36.8 Jehoiakim was 8 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 3 months and 10 days. Did you notice something strange here? I think you did. How much time did he reign in Jerusalem? 2 Kings says he reigned 3 months. 2 Chronicles says he reigned 3 months and 10 days. Which one is it? And how old was he when he became king? 2 Kings says he was 18 years old when he became king. But 2 Chronicles says he was 8 years old when he became king. One of them at least is a lie. Maybe both. Who knows? Number 4. 2 Kings 8, 26. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king. 2 Chronicles 22, 2. 40 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he became Turin. Did you notice something? How old was Ahaziah when he became king? 2 Kings says he was 22 years old, but 2 Chronicles says he was 42 years old. Which one is it? And if you check the evolution of the Bible over the years, they keep changing verses in it. They keep modifying and removing information and adding information. If you check this exact verse, 2 Chronicles 22, see how many times it was changed. And sometimes they say it is 42 years old and sometimes 22, based on their whims and what they want you to believe in when you read the next version. So if the final version of the Bible we are reading right now was being changed and manipulated over the years by men, how can we consider it God's words? Number 5. Book of Ezra 1, 9-11 This is the number of them. 30 gold platters, 1,000 silver platters, 29 knives, 30 gold basins, 410 silver basins of a similar kind, 1,000 other articles. All the articles of gold and silver were 5,400. Whoever wrote this verse didn't have a calculator because the total is 2,499, not 5,400. And absolutely, God didn't make a math mistake. If it is not God who wrote that, then who? And why are we cherishing this person's book? Why does this person deserve our full obedience? He just was a guy without a calculator. Number 6. At the time of writing the Bible, the best minds of the world believed that the earth is flat. It was their understanding based on their own scientific knowledge. Now let's read. Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Whoever wrote this thinks that if you go on top of a very high mountain, you can see every country on earth. He didn't know yet that the earth isn't flat, but of course God already knew that. So do you still believe that these are words of God? Check this one out. Jeremiah 16.19 The nations will come from the ends of the earth. Someone please explain to me where are the ends of the earth. Job 37.3 And sends it to the ends of the earth. Again, where are these ends of the earth? 
Isaiah 11, 12. From the four corners of the earth. Looks like the earth is flat and has four corners. Whoever wrote this thought that the earth is like a square piece of paper with four corners. God, of course, will never say that. Revelation 7, 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. Again, whoever wrote this thought that the earth is flat square with four corners, and there is an angel holding each corner, so the wind will not blow it. Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 7. Whoever wrote the Bible thought that mountains are the pillars and the foundation of heaven. Without mountains, heaven will fall on us. Job 26.11 The pillars of heaven tremble. 2 Samuel 22.8 Then the earth shook and quaked, and the foundations of the heavens trembled. Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 8 Jonah 2, 5 and 6 To the roots of the mountains I sank down. Whoever wrote these verses describing the sinking story of Jonah thought that if you go deep in the sea, you can actually go under the land and under the mountains. He thought that the continents that we live on and the mountains are swimming over water. He even didn't know that mountains have roots deep underground. Psalm 136, 6 who spreads out the earth upon the waters. Again, I don't know why they think that the whole earth is a big ocean and continents are like big boats floating over them. Psalm 24, 1 and 2 The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. For the third time, guys, we should believe that Europe is a very big boat floating over the water. Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 9. Genesis 1, 6-9 And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated water under the vault from water above the vault, and it was so. God called the vault sky. This is the complete concept of earth based on the Bible. Water under, water above, and both water areas are separated by the earth and the sky. So the whole universe is endless amount of water, and the earth and the sky is in the middle. This is why the sky is blue, because there is water over it. And don't forget that the mountains are the pillars of the sky, holding the sky up. Do you still believe that these are words of God? Number 10. Genesis 1, 3-16 and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. This is the first day. Remember that. Number 16. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. The fourth day. So God created light and day and night in the first day, then God created the sun and the moon and the stars in the fourth day. Don't you think that they should have been the opposite? How were their light and day and night before creating the sun and the moon and the stars? Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 11, Genesis 3:14. After Adam and Eve ate the forbidden tree, the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. First of all, serpents don't eat dust. Second of all, if one serpent made a mistake somehow, why should all the innocent newborn serpents crawl on their bellies too? Does that make sense to you? Is that your idea of God? Do you think God is a childish angry kid who cannot control his fury that he punishes newborn serpents for a sin that they didn't commit? What about number 16? To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Do you really think God hates all newborn innocent women and made them all suffer pain for a crime that they didn't commit?
Do you really think we have an unfair God? Do you really think that God is full of hate towards one gender? Maybe this is why God chose to have a son, not a daughter. In other words, do you think God is sexist? Or does it make more sense to believe that God isn't and this book was written by a sexist person? Number 12, Leviticus 11, 20 to 23. All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. There are however some flying insects that walk on all fours that you may eat. Number 23, but all other flying insects that have four legs, you are to regard them as clean. There is one problem with these verses. I will give you a second to guess. There are no insects with four legs. Do you still believe that these are words of God? Number 13, Mark 4, 31. It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. There is one problem with this verse. I will give you a second to guess. Yes, the mustard seed is not the smallest seed on earth. Do you still believe that these are words of God? Number 14, Leviticus 14, 52 and 53. He shall purify the house with the bird's blood. 53 and it will be clean do you think god is telling us to use the bird's blood to clean our houses should we start buying bird's blood instead of detergents do you still believe these are words of god number 15 numbers 5 12 to 31 this one is too long, you can just pause the video and read it yourself. It says that if a man doubts his wife and he wants to know if she is faithful to him or not, he should take her to a priest. Then the priest shall take some holy water and put some dust in it and then tell her that if she was faithful to her husband, this water will not harm her. But if she cheated on her husband, this water will bring a curse on her. May this water bring a curse enter your body, so that your abdomen swells or your womb miscarries. The problem is I think dirty water with dust most likely will hurt her stomach, whether she was faithful or not. Do you still believe that these are words of God? Number 16. Genesis 2, 2 and 3. By the seventh day, God has finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Rested. The God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Do you really think that God was tired after working six days he needed to rest? Is this the image of God you are worshipping? A God who gets tired and needs to rest? Do you still believe these are words of God? I wouldn't be surprised if they wrote God needed to drink coffee on the sixth day or something. Number 17. Genesis 32, 28. The man said, From now on, your name will no longer be Jacob. You will be called Israel, because you have wrestled with God and with men, and you have won. This verse describes a very amusing wrestling round. Jacob versus God. Who do you think will win? Exactly. Of course Jacob won the fight against God. Maybe because God was tired from creating the heavens and the earth and he needed rest. That's why he lost against Jacob. Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 18. Jesus states that the believers will be able to handle snake bites and will be immune from any poison they might happen to drink and will be able to heal the sick. Mark 16, 17 and 18 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I haven't seen one believer until now who can handle snake bites and drink poison and heal the sick. 
Actually, even religious leaders themselves, which represent the best of believers, when confronted with this, they refuse to drink poison. My brother has given me a deadly poison and he wants me to drink it. <laughs> he wants me to make a show and tell you that it is true what is written in Mark 16, that if we drink something that is poisoned, we will not die. Now, very strange, you see, I believe in God, I have experienced the Holy Spirit and in our family, we have experienced the Holy Spirit as a reality. And the Holy Spirit tells us what is going to happen. And my wife told me Thursday night, Stanley, be careful, someone will try to poison you. <laughs> If you want to kill me, I must have five minutes more. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that in front of Herod, Jesus did not open his mouth according to the scripture. And Jesus did not make a show of the miracles. And when you gave me this question today, I recognized the devil in you. And I'm not going to obey the devil. I'm not going to make a show. What are you afraid of, man? Aren't you a believer? Don't worry, you will be fine. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. He will never drink it because he knows it's a lie. And he will never admit it's a lie because he makes his earning by lying to you. If he admits it's a lie, he will lose his job and fame. He will be just a poor guy without income. He's saying that this man in the audience is the devil. But the verse says that believers can cast out devils. Why don't you cast him out? The real victims here are the poor, innocent people who believed in the Bible and followed it blindly and got severely hurt because of that. Look at the famous preacher whose faith centered on a passage in the Bible promising protection from snakes. A rattlesnake took his life. Matthew Wolford, a renowned Pentecostal serpent handler, died after suffering a bite from one of the snakes that he used to show his devotion to God. ومن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا أولئك يعرضون على ربهم ويقول الأشهاد هؤلاء الذين كذبوا على ربهم ألا لعنة الله على الظالمين Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 19, 2 Chronicles 18, 21 to 22. I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing them, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. These two verses alone destroy the whole Bible. They clearly say that God put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. If this verse is true, then all the information we got from these prophets is false. And if the information we have from these prophets is true, then these verses are lies. Choose one. Do you still believe that these are words of God? Number 20. 1 Samuel 15.3 Listen now to the message from the Lord. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Do you think God will order the killing of women and children? Do you think God will order the killing of infants?
infants, even donkeys. Why donkeys? Are these the words of God or the words of a terrorist? Number 21, Numbers 31, 14 to 18. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands, and commanders of hundreds who returned from the battle. Have you allowed all women to live? He asked them. Now kill all the boys, and kill every woman who had slept with a man. But save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. Do you believe that God ordered Moses to kill the women and the boys and to leave the virgin girls for the men to enjoy them? This is exactly what happened in World War II by Soviet occupation troops in Germany. Hundreds of thousands and possibly as many as two million girls were raped by troops. Do you believe that supposedly Jesus is the God of Moses and Jesus commanded him to kill women and rape virgins? Are these the words of God or the words of a terrorist? Number 22 Leviticus 25:44. Your male and female slaves are to come from nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. 1 Peter 2, 18 Slaves, submit yourselves to your masters. Titus 2, 9 Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything. Exodus 21, 20-21 Everyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result. But they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two, since the slave is their property. Do you think that God permits enslaving people from surrounding nations and beating them up with a rod, but while making sure they don't die in the process? So you can beat up your slave until he or she has internal bleeding and broken bones, but as long as he or she stay alive for a day or two, it's okay, since they are your property? Don't worry God, I will make sure they don't die on the same day as me beating them. They will struggle from internal bleeding and broken bones without dying on the same day. And that's okay, I think, because they are my property. Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 23. Deuteronomy 25, 11-12 If two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Sisters in humanity, don't defend your husband or they will cut off your hand. Seems like whoever wrote this verse had a problem with women kicking him in the crouch. Do you still believe these are words of God? Number 24 And this is a really nice one. Genesis 19.32 Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him, and preserve our family line through our father. That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went and slept with him. The next day the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him. So both of Lot's daughter became pregnant by the father. While in 2 Peter 2, 7, it says, And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless. So Genesis describes Lot as an awful human being, but Peter describes Lot as a righteous man. So is he a righteous man, or a man who gets drunk every night and sleeps with both of his daughters repeatedly until he gets his own daughters pregnant from him? Which one is it? Do you still believe that these are words of God? Number 25 2 Samuel 24 9 Jacob reported the number of fighting men to the king. In Israel, there were 800,000 able bodied men who can handle a sword, and in Judah, 500,000. 1 Chronicles 21 5 Jacob reported the number of fighting men to David. In all Israel, there are 1,100,000 men who can handle a sword, including 470,000 in Judah. So were there 800,000 men in Israel or 1,100,000 men? 
were there 500,000 in Judah or 470,000? Is the first one lying or the second one lying or both?